Welcome to my channel and thanks for stopping by. In my previous video, I discussed the concept of non-parametric test statistics, giving highlights of a list of the most common ones. So, in this video, I will be demonstrating how to perform and interpret the Mann-Whitney U-Test in SPSS. My name is Tidokan, and this is Tidokan Mark Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. The Mann-Whitney U-Test is a non-parametric test that is used to compare differences between two independent groups when the dependent variable is either ordinal or continuous, but not normally distributed. Basically, Mann-Whitney U-Test assesses whether the distributions of the two groups are different. The Mann-Whitney U-Test is often considered the non-parametric alternative to the independent sample t-test. What this means is that when you have a set of data that qualifies for independent sample t-test, but fails to meet the necessary parametric assumptions for the test, especially if the dependent variable of the data is not normally distributed and cannot be corrected for normality, then you can proceed to perform the Mann-Whitney U-Test with the data. The Mann-Whitney U-Test approach to data analysis is different from independent sample t-test as follows. Mann-Whitney U-Test compares medians and ranks, while paired sample t-test compares the means. Mann-Whitney U-Test can handle ordinal data as well as continuous data, while the paired sample t-test can only handle continuous variable measured on interval or ratio scales, and Mann-Whitney U-Test does not assume a normal distribution of the data while paired sample t-test requires that the data be normally distributed. Another important feature necessary to be considered is the effect size. Now, the question you may expect me to answer is, what is an effect size? In research, effect size is a statistical concept or a numeric value that indicates the strength of the relationship between two variables in a population. It is calculated by a simple quotient between the z-statistics value and the square root of the number of cases. I shall express this equation during the hands-on demonstration. Effect size can be small, medium, or large. Effect size of 0.2 is a small effect size. Effect size of 0.5 is a medium effect size. And effect size of greater than or equal to 0.8 is a large effect size. However, you are advised to use these effect size criteria carefully. A small effect size indicates a limited significant relationship while a large effect size indicates a significant relationship. Now, let's go into SPSS and take a look at the dataset for this demonstration. This dataset provides information about a company's ice cream product, and the company wants to compare customer satisfaction between ice cream with strawberry flavor and ice cream with vanilla flavor. The customer satisfaction is rated on a 5-point Likert scale, ranging from 1 equals very unsatisfied to 5 equals very satisfied. For this demonstration, the customer satisfaction scores are collected on an ordinal scale. Please note that the dependent variable can also be on a continuous scale. So, if the dependent variable in your dataset is a continuous scale, you are still good to go. As you can see in this dataset, the independent variable is ice cream, consisting of strawberry and vanilla flavors, and the dependent variable is the satisfaction scores, rated on a 5 Likert scale as an ordinal variable. For this data set, the guiding principle is the null and alternate hypothesis, which can be stated as follows. Null hypothesis states that the distribution of satisfaction scores is the same across the categories of ice cream, while the alternate hypothesis states that the distribution of satisfaction scores is different between the categories of ice cream. But before you go ahead with this type of analysis to decide whether to reject or accept the null hypothesis, it is important to curiously inspect the dataset to ensure that the necessary conditions to perform Mann-Whitney U-Test are available in the data. As you can see, the independent variable, ice cream has only two groups or cases, such as strawberry and vanilla. This information, however, qualifies the data for either independent sample t-test analysis or Mann-Whitney U-Test analysis. On the other hand, the dependent variable, which is the satisfaction score is measured on five points Likert scales, meaning it is an ordinal variable. This information qualifies the data for only the Mann-Whitney U-Test analysis. Now, let's also check if the dependent variable is skewed or normally distributed for the two groups. To check for that, go to the menu bar and click on Data. From the sub-menu, click on Split File to open the Split File dialog box. In this dialog box, you have your variables in the box on the left. Now, 
click the radio button for compare means to activate the column for group base on. Then, click on your independent variable, ice cream, and then click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the group base on box. Then, click OK to close this dialog box. Behind the scene, the dependent variable has been splinted between the two groups. Thereafter, go to the menu bar again and click on Analyze. From the submenu, click on Descriptive Statistics, and from the drop-down options, click on Frequencies to open the Frequencies dialog box as you can see. Now, click on your dependent variable, Satisfaction Score, and then click on this Transfer arrow key to move it to the variables box. Go straight to the Chart button and click to open it. In this dialog box, click the radio button for histograms, and then check the box for Show Normal Curve on Histogram. Click Continue to close this dialog box. Uncheck the box for Display Frequency Tables, and finally, click on OK to produce the plots. As you can see, the distributions for satisfaction score for Strawberry Group and Vanilla Group is skewed respectively, and they are not normally distributed. This also evidently qualifies the application of Man Whitney U test analysis for this dataset. Now, at this point, we can go ahead to perform Man Whitney U test. However, there are two different routes to follow to perform Man Whitney U test, and whichever route you choose to follow will produce the same results. Route 1 is the independent samples option, and Route 2 is the legacy dialogues option. But in this video, I will demonstrate how to use the two different routes to perform Man Whitney U test. Route 1. The Route 1 is the independent samples option. To follow this route, go to the menu bar and click on Analyze. From the sub-menu, put your cursor on non-parametric test. And from the drop-down options, click on independent samples to open the dialog box. In this dialog box, there are three pages, such as objectives, feeds, and settings, as you can see. In the objective page, Click the radio button for customized analysis. Then click to open the feeds page. In this feeds page, click the radio button for use custom feed assignments. Then go to your variables in the box on the left. Click on the dependent variable satisfaction score and click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the test feeds. Thereafter, Click on the independent variable ice cream and click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the group column. Then click to open the settings page. In this page, the choose test options is open by default. Here, click on the radio button for customized test to activate the buses for non-parametric tests. Now, go ahead and check the bus for Man with New test since our interest is to perform Man with New test. Then click on test options and ensure that the significance level is set at 0.05 and the confidence interval is set at 95%. If there are missing values in your dataset, then use the exclude cases options to fix your missing values. But since my data for this demonstration does not have any missing values, I will just go ahead and click run to perform the Man with New test analysis and produce the result in the output window. As you can see, the results have been produced in a simplified form in this table, consisting of the null hypothesis column, the test column, the p-value column designated as xig, and the decision column. Basically, for any statistical test, the goal is to determine whether to reject or accept the null hypothesis and one of the determinant factors is the probability level, that is the p-value designated as xig. So if the p-value is less than 0.05, then there is significant difference. But if the p-value is greater than 0.05, then there is no significant difference. As you can see in this table, the p-value is 0.106, and this is of course greater than 0.05 indicating that there is no statistically significant difference among the satisfaction scores across categories of ice cream. Hence, the decision would be to retain the null hypothesis because we do not have sufficient evidence to reject it. However, this does not mean that there is no arithmetic difference in their mean ranks, but just that their mean rank difference is not sufficiently large to be considered as statistically significantly different.
I shall explain this further when I discuss the results of the second route. Now, let's explore Route 2. Route 2 is the Legacy Dialogues option. To follow this route, go to the menu bar and click on Analyze. From the sub-menu, put your cursor on No Parametric Tests. And from the drop-down options, put your cursor on Legacy Dialogues. And from the drop-down options, click on Two Independent Samples to open the dialog box. From the box on the left, click on your Dependent Variable Satisfaction Score and click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the test variable list box on the right. Then click on the independent variable ice cream and click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the grouping variable box. As you can see, there are two question marks in peritensis attached to the independent variable. These question marks are asking you to provide the coding system for the groups. So click on the define groups button and in the dialog box that opens, Enter 1 in the box for group 1 and enter 2 in the box for group 2 and then click continue to close this dialog box. As you can now see, the question marks have been replaced by the 1 and 2 coding system you have just entered. Now click on the exact button to open the exact test dialog box. In this dialog box, ensure that the radio button for asymptotic only is checked. Then. Click continue to close this dialog box. Now click the options button to open the dialog box. If your dependent variable is a scale measurement or a continuous variable, you can check the box for descriptives or quartile, depending on what you want. But since my dependent variable for this demonstration is an ordinal scale, I won't need any of these statistics. So I will not check any of the boxes under statistics. If your data contains missing values or missing data, then under the missing value section, you can choose the appropriate radio button to fix the missing value in your data set. But since the data I am using for this demonstration does not have missing values, I will just go ahead to click continue to close this dialog box. Now, under the test type, ensure that the man with new test is checked. If in your SPSS package, this box is not checked by default. Please kindly check it now since you are performing man with new test. Then click OK for the configuration to process and produce the results for man with new test in the output window. Now, the results have been produced and as you can see, unlike the route 1, two different tables are produced using the route 2 pathway. The two tables are the ranks table, and the test statistics table. In the ranks table, you can see that 15 customers participated in the satisfaction score for strawberry and vanilla ice cream each, making a total of 30 participants. The most important information in this ranks table is the mean rank column. As you can see, the mean rank for strawberry is 12.87 score, while for vanilla, the mean rank is 18.13 scores amounting to an arithmetic difference of 5.26. Now, though the average score for vanilla is higher than the average score for strawberry, can it be convenient to say that customers are more satisfied with vanilla ice cream than the strawberry ice cream? Or is a difference of 5.26 big enough to statistically conclude that there is difference in the categories of ice cream? This is a question that we need to statistically provide answers for by checking on the provisions of the p-value in the next table. Now let's proceed to the test statistics table. In this table, every information provided is important and they must be reported in the context of your report. However, the most important result in this table that will help to determine whether there is statistically significant difference between customer satisfaction with vanilla flavored ice cream and strawberry flavored ice cream is the p-value designated by the exact significance level in this test statistics table. Now, there are some conditions to guide you in making statistical decision. If the p-value is less than 0.05, then there is significant difference. But if the p-value is greater than 0.05, then there is no significant difference. As you can see in this test statistics table, the p-value designated as exact significance level is 0 0.106, which is the same as the p-value we saw earlier in RAT1. 
0.106 is greater than 0.05, and this suffices to mean that we do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis because there is no statistically significant difference in the customer satisfaction between vanilla ice cream and strawberry ice cream, regardless of their ranked mean difference. So, we will retain the null hypothesis like we did during the RAT1. Now, you can see that the same results are obtained when we follow RAT1 and RAT2 respectively to perform my Whitney U test. Suffice to me that you can use the route that is better for you. Since there is no significant difference in the satisfaction across categories of ice cream, let's now determine what the effect size will be. Is the effect size going to be small, medium, or large? Let's find out. Since XPSS system does not produce results for the effect size, you can use this equation to determine the effect size. Where arrow is effect size, Z is the standardized Z statistics, and N is the total number of cases. Now, from the table, Z is 2.212 and N is 30. And when you fit these numbers into the equation like this, the effect size will approximately be 0.5, which indicates a medium effect size. This means that though there is no significant difference in the customer satisfaction between the vanilla and strawberry ice cream, there is a medium range of satisfaction that is equally derived from both strawberry and vanilla ice cream. This is how to perform my Whitney U test in XPSS, and I hope you'll be able to replicate this procedure for non-parametric tests to analyze your own dataset and interpret the results. But right now, we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, you want to see more video contents like this, please like this video by giving it a thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel to receive notification every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription. Thanks for liking this video, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.